All right, so the live coding system that I made is run on a TCP socket server, and I'm using two clients for this demonstration. Here are all the commands that we can use in this system, and let's add new instrument into the system. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy a really simple instrument from CSUN Qt. Here, um, we don't need instrument and instrument number and end end. Uh, all we need is the is the source in between the wrapper. And here you see the system automatically assign new wrapper for the instrument and you can access to the instrument by its name like this. And you can trigger the same instrument from another client as well. Here we have a little bit of latency, but that's because every event is being quantized by this quant variable. Here is the implementation for the event queue. And now we're going to set our loop. So max bit 4 bit and then max measure 4 measures. Then the system is going to loop through 4 measures. So now it goes back to measure number 1. Now we have our loop set, let's trigger our instruments with loop. The parameter for this command is that um, loop interval, loop offset, and P3 and P4 and P5, so on and so forth. Of course, we can just set the interval of the loop into 16th note to have the same result. Now let's go ahead and look at circular loop in command. Here it takes interval, offset, and loop type 0 means ascending, 1 means descending, and 2 means random. Each P fields independently loop to one another. And you can have as many arrays of P fields as you want. Each element within the array is separate by comma. Now we're going to look at my favorite commands, which is circular loop binding. We can only play a certain pitch degree within a certain range that we specified and that pitch degree is bound to either root of the chord or the key center. Here I specified first, third and fifth from the chord. And now if I change the chord from the loop, I made a mistake here, I needed capital C. So the syntax of this command is that first, uh, measure number, and second, the interval from the key, and third, which mode that you want to play. Available keys are followings. To better hear the chord progression, let me add the bass note. And 
and this time let's try to use a random loop. Another application for this command is um, is to play the chord. If the multiple instances of the loop share the same range but different chord tone, it will automatically make the inversion for your chord. Now let's add bus. Before you attempt to make a bus instrument, you need to register a GA uh, variable within the CSON instance that you're going to use. And we can also make channel with similar way. Now let's add bus instrument. So you're going to specify the name of the instrument and then the GA variable that you're going to use within the instrument and then the source of your instrument. To specify the GA variable that you're going to use within the instrument, it's not mandatory, but it's highly recommended to avoid any conflict between clients. Now let's add a new instrument that uses the GA variable that we specified. Of course, other instruments can use this GA variable as an output, but you need to have only one instrument that uses this GA variable as an input.
Here I made a mistake. Um, so instead of test, I should have used um, test two that I just made. Here I made another mistake, um, I didn't specify which channel I want to change but the audio engine doesn't stop because uh, client communication is handled by another thread so therefore um, the error occurred from that thread doesn't really affect to the audio engine, so which is cool. <laughs> 